Today, we're going to show you how to start sending HL7 messages over TCP IP in less than 15 minutes using the Ultraport HL7 TCP IP router. This software is incredibly versatile. It's incredibly easy to set up and use. We're going to do it in six steps, and that'll include two different unit tests by running it locally and by running it as a Windows service. Our first step is going to be to download and install the software. That's easy. You go to our website, hermitechnz.com. Once into the site, go to Downloads and download the Ultraport HL7 TCP IP router. 32 or 64 bit, it really makes no difference. On our website, you can also purchase licenses. If you click on User Manuals, you can get to all of the online help for all of our current products. Once it's uh, installed, it will put a shortcut on your desktop. It looks like this. And that's step one, downloading and installing the uh, Ultraport router software. Done. So next, we want to activate the router software. Again, very easy to do. We're going to start our router program up by double-clicking it. The first time that the router starts, of course, you're going to get to the end user license agreement. This is a standard EULA. It's boilerplate. You can feel free to read through it if you want. Uh, it's nothing near as, as extensive as Apple's or Facebook's. You can do two, ty two kinds of activation. There's online activation and manual activation. Now, manual activation is if you are trying to activate on a computer that's not connected to the internet or the internet is blocked, refer to the online help for information on how to do that. We're going to use online activation. It'll only take a few seconds. If you haven't purchased it, you can activate it in demo mode. We wouldn't be able to do all of the tests we're going to do today in demo mode. But I've already purchased a license, so I'm going to say yes, this is the first installation of this product on this computer, and continue. Now I have to enter my Hermitech customer information. Now you're going to know what this is. It's You have to register on our website and create your account before you can download the software or purchase it, so you will have your Hermitech account information. Put my password in. Now this third field at the bottom, this identifying comment, can be important. We have customers that have hundreds of these licenses. This field identifies this installation to you and us if you ever need support. You can make it whatever you want, up to about 50 characters. So I'm going to click Activate. And now it's pulled up, and this is here under my account. I have one license for the Ultraport Router 3 connection. I have not activated it, so I just click the Activate button, and it asks me, are you sure that you want to activate this? It's going to use it up. I say yes, and done. Our license is activated. You can see that I have a live three connection license. That means I can, I can create three router profiles that are enabled. So step two, complete. Now we want to look at the global settings. Before you start with the router, we always recommend that you set your global settings first. Get to it by clicking the globe on the toolbar, File, Global Settings, and we're going to work from top to bottom. Archive the HL7 messages sent. Now, for, the, for this sending, we're assuming that you're creating the HL7 messages and you are keeping your own archive. If you'd like us to do it, you can check this box and say whether you want to keep it in one file per day with all the HL7 messages you send out all day long for each profile one file per hour, one file per message. You'll want to, one file per day or one file per hour is usually fine. If you choose one file per message, you know, that can get troublesome. We've had customers that choose that and then busily start sending out 100,000 messages a day for 30 days. The file's got three, folder's got three million files in it. Section two, this is very important. Always keep a traffic log. And we use it for the monitor tab in there so you can see how many you've sent out so far, etc, etc, etc. System logs and file maintenance. We keep text logs of what's going on with each profile. They're in the installation folder. 
and then how long do you want to keep those for and if you're archiving how, how long do you want to keep the archive files for connection timeout two seconds is an eternity and that's fine under CPU allocation these are advanced refer to the online help you're not going to need these in the majority of cases so if we save that and again we've completed another step we've updated our global settings next we want to actually create an ultraport HL7 router profile our first one it tells us what we need to do right here if we have none is just click the new button on the toolbar or file new router profile from the menu so we'll do that and top to bottom we're gonna make sure that it's enabled we have to give it a name every you since you can create as many profiles as you want they all have to have a unique name down in the next section <clears throat> we're gonna set the uh, port number that we want to send HL7 messages to. Now this is given to you by your HL7 trading partner so you'll know what this is. Now I've got my Ultraport listener down here running to simulate the uh, the trading partner but even though it's on this computer we're gonna fake it out into believing that it's a remote computer by just putting our computer's IP address in here. Oh, a delay between messages. Typically, you don't need to do that unless the other side is very slow. Do you want to keep the connection open? You usually don't need to do that. You can refer to the help again. The message control characters are standard. Next is our data folder. Where should this Ultraport router look for HL7 messages? And in the folder, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, one message, one file with one message, or one file with a thousand messages. It will work either way. So there, that was, we've selected our folder. The file extension it will look for is HL7. And now we can, if we want to, we can test the connection to the HL7 listener. If there's a listener running at that IP and that port, we can click the test the connection button. It just gives us a little blurb. But what it's going to do is going to open and close the connection. You say yes and success. We have actually connected to a listener. So I'm going to save this. And there it is. We've created our first Ultraport router profile. Now we want to test it. We're going to run it two tests. We're going to test it running locally and we're going to test it as a service. You do all of your running from the Windows Service Status tab. Click here and you can see that there are some errors because I haven't got the Windows service installed yet. I can fix it by clicking install Windows services but I'm not going to do that because our first test is going to be to run locally. This means just run it in an immediate window. And we're doing it this way because when we do this it is running as us. And then when we run a service it runs in a separate memory space as a different user. So if there's a problem with user rights, we want to know, and that's why we're going to do two tests. Now it says there's no data files. We don't have any HL7 message files in that folder to send out. So I'm going to pull up my trusty Ultraport HL7 notepad. I have a file of 288 messages loaded into it, and I'm going to export those. Uh, I'll only do 100 of them. So I'm going to do from 1 to 100 to a folder. I go choose my folder and I want a file extension of HL7 so it's going to create a hundred individual files and say yes and we're probably going to be too late we are it's that fast it's already queued them up and is sending them out and that's it it's already sent them out. It sent 100 HL7 messages. It got back 100 positive acknowledgments. If I go to my Ultraport listener, we should be able to see it received 100 messages. It sent back 100 acknowledgments. Our test is complete. We can stop the, the, the local listener and mark it as done. We have ran locally successfully. So our final test is to test it by running as a Windows service. So here we go. We're going to close this. 
Now remember the services haven't been installed yet. I'm going to fix that by clicking the Install Windows Services button. And now the services are installed and they're, they're not running yet. I haven't started them, but they are registered in the Windows Services. I can start them by clicking here. But what I'm going to do is go to open the Windows Services. And if I scroll down to the Use for Ultraport, I should see my Ultraport router service. And there it is. You can see it's not running, the start mode is automatic, and it runs as local system. You can change those if you have problems. So start the services up, and it is now running. So it's trying to send HL7 messages right now. But remember, we don't have any messages in there. We already sent them all. So we're going to go back to the trusty Ultraport notepad and we're going to export again. Again, I'll do the first hundred to a folder. It keeps the last folder that I used and I export and it's picked them up and our listener should be receiving these messages. Now you can see right there, they're queued up and going out. They're already gone. Our listener has already received them. So you see now our listeners now received 200 messages and sent back 200 acknowledgments. We are completely done. We can close the router program completely. Our service is running in the background. Um, we've completed our test. We've downloaded, installed it, activated global settings, created a profile, all in less than 15 minutes.